making a tire for uh, uh, one of your models is actually pretty straightforward. You need to find a pattern for a tread, and then you need to basically create a slice of that tire. And so I'm going to do that really quick, and then we'll move on to actually turning that slice into a full tire. So once you have your tread slice uh, all modeled, uh, usually a slice of the tread that has a very straight edge is usually going to give, yield the best results. You can still make a, a tread with something that's a little more jagged, but it'll take a little more cleanup time uh, once you're done. But uh, basically, select your slice. Uh, you want to make sure that the pivot point is aligned with uh, one edge of it. Uh, so in this case, select the geometry, activate the pivot point, uh, and then I can snap align it or point align, uh, point snap it to uh, the central edge along that outer edge there. And then I'm going to Control D or Command D, depending on your operating system. I'm going to duplicate it and align that slice with the opposite edge. And once I do that, as long as I did it, basically I duplicated it and right away moved it and didn't do anything else in between that, I can press Shift D. And what it'll do is it'll do sort of a special duplicate or a duplicate with transform. So it actually aligns my slices relative to that shift in distance from the original. And so I'm going to create a whole bunch, uh, let's say around 40 duplicates. Okay. And so now I can select all those slices, go to mesh, and then do a combine while I have my uh, geometry selected, of course. Uh, once that's done, take my geometry, go to modify, do a center pivot. I'm going to move things over and just try to uh, center align it more or less with the world. And I'm just going to freeze it there. Okay, sorry, before we continue, we need to do one other thing. So right now we have about 40 duplicates of the same slice, and each duplicate is basically separate. We need to actually merge all of those. So one of the easiest ways to do that uh, is to select all of your verts, and then from your polygons menus, go to Edit Mesh, Merge, go to the Option box, and set the threshold value to the lowest possible value you can get so that only the overlapping vertices will merge. Uh, otherwise you could collapse your entire structure. So then do a merge. Okay, so now when I come in and I do a test of uh, what was once an edge between two different pieces is now a common edge. Okay, so now I can delete my history on that and go back to the animation menu. It's going to create deformers and under nonlinear I'm going to choose bend. And so then it creates the bend deformer manipulator which I then need to rotate down so it actually aligns with my geometry. And so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X and then we come down to the inputs and go to bend and choose curvature. And you can uh, just left click directly on the word curvature and then middle mouse click and drag to bend. Now, as you can see, it's actually bending on the wrong axis. So we need to actually rotate the manipulator around by about another 90 degrees so it's actually bending my tread. And so I'm going to type that in so it's actually more specific. And so I'm bending it so that the extruded part of the tread is sticking out and the depth is on the interior or the negative sides on the interior. And so I'm going to push the curvature all as far as it will go. Now, usually once you get to this point, it's kind of difficult to get it to align because you want to get those edges to basically align up perfectly. And so we're actually pretty close. It looks like it's dead on. And I think that's because I did a center pivot. So that's actually perfect. I put it exactly at 180. And we are good. Yeah, perfect alignment at 180. Okay, so once that's done, I will usually create a duplicate just in case there's any problems. And I'll use the duplicate to create my final tire and I'll leave the other one in reserve in case there's some problem I discover that I need to fix before I'm done. So once again, you're going to want to uh, select vertices. You want to find that central edge where they actually merged. 
and you want to just select those points and do a edit mesh and do a merge again just to make sure that line is sealed okay so now when you look at your tire it is actually a tire so if I kill this and I do a little smooth preview you can actually see we have a complete tire uh, at this point you can just uh, select the edges of your tire and so it looks like it didn't merge the right end so vertex got a little disoriented but when I moved it so edit mesh do the merge so that's another way to test it try to select the edge if it actually crosses over you know there's some place where it didn't merge properly okay so now I can come in and select this outer edge and that's so that's perfect it went completely around select this outer edge and then I can do a couple of different things I can scale it out a little bit uh, if I want to a little more space between that inner edge there and scale it down a little bit and then I can do an extrusion to start to create the sides of the tire and so there's a couple ways you can do this too you could manually start pulling things down Um, but usually what I like to do is I like to click on a little uh, blue Q object and that will just scale things down generally and then come up to the scale X and set that back to uh, zero I'm oh, sorry one so that it keeps the sides flush with the outer tread and also once you actually have the inner tread here. If your geometry has, uh, you can actually take your geometry now and we can do a modify and center pivot and we can snap align it with our central world space. We're going to isolate it. So I'm going to grid snap it. So I'm just basically X, snap the grid, and then while the object's selected, you can just drag it to the grid and it'll snap align with it modify freeze transformation is zero everything out and so then I can just take this edge on the inner piece here and if I go to my move tool and then go to the uh, tool settings I can tell it that I want it to reflect and so now I can actually modify the one edge and manipulate the other at the same time don't have to worry about uh, any weird offset and so I can scale that in to the point where I want maybe to do another extrusion or maybe where I want to stick a hubcap or whatever okay so using the same tread that I created to help me create my uh, simple tire here what I can do is I can actually turn this also into some sort of a tank tread. Also pretty simple, not perfect, but it actually looks pretty good if, you don't, uh, if you're not too specific about some of the distortion in certain areas. Uh, I've actually seen this used a lot and most people don't even notice. So what you can do is you can uh, take your tire, make sure you center pivot before you do anything else, and usually it's a good idea to place it wherever you're going to use it just so you can save a little trouble later. Uh, create the lattice and then in the history for the lattice which appears in your channels box to the right you can add a few divisions to it you could do this ahead of time uh, usually you don't want to add any divisions on the uh, x-axis which is the s you want to add them along the up and up the top to bottom and usually along the length depends on the orientation of the world space okay so there we have our tire with our lattice on it now the great thing about the lattice is that as long as it's around the geometry no matter what shape it takes when you rotate along the x-axis it spins normally right so if I actually take my lattice now and I deform it so it gives us more of a tread shape which I'll do rather quickly so it won't be very pretty but just to make a point if 
you do this carefully enough, uh, it actually looks really good. Okay, so let's say this is going to be my tread. And also, if you have uh, enough lattice points, you can really control the way this looks and minimize any distortion in visible areas, so it actually turns out pretty nice. Okay, so let's say that's going to be our tread. So if I connect this properly, we get something that actually looks like a really nice tank tread. Okay, so it's consistent, it allows us to rotate normally, you don't have to do anything special, no special emission using uh, particles, or you don't have to do anything with uh, curves. It's pretty much just rotating the tread within the lattice. And of course, the lattice is currently in control of where the geometry is. Okay. But even though it's displaced from where its pivot point is, it should still rotate normally as long as you connect it. Okay. So that's basically making a tire or a tread using uh, very simple tools and very basic deformers. Just a little side note about using the lattices to create treads. Uh, what you usually want to do with the geometry inside of that you're going to put inside of the lattice is usually scale it up just a little bit, a small percentage before you add the lattice, and then return it to its default scale. Uh, just to make sure that when you're actually rotating it that the geometry is always going to stay inside of uh, the lattice area. So as long as it's a little smaller than the lattice area, you're guaranteed to keep it uh, inside. 